Good day, everybody, and yet again, we are back together. Uh, still continuing on that uh, question paper from uh, the November 2020. Apparently, this was written nationally um, uh, during the prelims. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please just make sure that you're part of the family and that you continue to learn with us. And then, uh, uh, by the way, for those of you who need or require assistance with mathematics or physical science, please, you can hit me up. Uh, my email address is info at mlungisingosi.co.za. So we're looking at question eight, and that's uh, that has to do with the galvanic cell. All right, let's get straight into it. So we're given a galvanic cell uh, at standard conditions, okay? Uh, so for those of you who may not have had the full lesson on this, please just make sure that you go to uh, our full lessons and you can actually just binge on it, okay, and learn how to, um, you know, operate or, or rather answer questions based on the galvanic cell. All right, so they're giving us a galvanic cell at standard conditions. It's represented by the cell notation below which is X and Y, okay? Those are our electrodes. Now, I want you to please note, first of all, uh, this tells us that there's a change in phase, okay? Why? Because we see that backslash there, okay? So in this case, it tells us that uh, this um, electrode changed in phase and became aqueous. So already that tells you this must have been zinc, right? Uh, we changed to zinc two plus. However, when you look at the, and by the way, uh, for the cell notation, this also tells us that whatever it is that's on the left-hand side, that should always be our anode, right? Uh, in the cell notation, that is. And whatever is on the right is a cathode, obviously, that undergoes reduction. And this tells you that uh, we've got ion 3 plus, uh, okay, uh, ions, all right, and then ion 2 plus ions, okay? So in this case, it means they didn't change in phase, both of them in aqueous form. And how you indicate that, uh, you show it by a comma, all right? So obviously, you'd need to use an electrode there uh, to make sure that there's electrical connectivity. Uh, usually, you either use uh, platinum or you can even use carbon, okay? Platinum being, you know, the most popular choice. Okay, so let's answer the questions. They say write down the name of formula of electrode X. I think we've already answered that in a sense. Okay, so we said, all right, here's our 8.1.1. Okay, so we know that uh, electrode X, that would be zinc. Okay, uh, they said name of formula. So you can either have written that in full zinc like that, or you can actually write the just the formula. So 8.1.2, they said electrode Y. We did say that electrode Y can either be platinum, okay, so you can write the um, uh, the formula PT, or you can write platinum in full, okay, uh, so that's platinum, or uh, you could have even used carbon, okay, but it, as I did say, uh, usually most of the time, uh, we do use platinum, okay, this ensures that it, there's electrical connectivity, right, uh, 8.1.3, okay, uh, they say the oxidizing agent, okay, now remember the moment I use the word agent, okay, so the oxidizing agent is the substance that undergoes reduction, so you always think about it uh, the other way around, right, once we say oxidizing agent, okay, think about it, it undergoes reduction, okay? Uh, once you say a reducing agent, it's the substance that undergoes oxidation, right? So in this case, which one underwent oxidation? Uh, I mean, a uh, reduction. Remember, we're looking for the oxidizing agent. Which one underwent uh, a reduction? It's the Fe3 plus ions. They receive the electrons, Okay, so we can say, well, it's the ion uh, 3 ions, okay, or you can say it's the Fe3 plus ions, okay, right, so uh, though that's our um, oxidizing agent, and then 
let's look at the, uh, it's going to be a quick one, this. They say write down the, uh, the one function of electrode Y, okay? So we did say, uh, in this case, we can say it just completes the circuit, okay? Or you can say um, um, it conducts, okay? It assists in conducting electricity, so whichever one uh, you want. Okay, so completes the circuit, um, completes the circuit, okay, all right, or you can just simply say it uh, ensures electrical uh, connectivity, right, moving right along, okay, they say, um, the, write down the half reaction that takes place at electrode Y. Now, uh, at electrode Y, remember uh, on that platinum electrode, uh, it's there to ensure that this actual uh, reduction reaction uh, takes place, right? And I want you to notice, we're going to take that from our standard reduction potentials table, but you have to make sure that you actually take the correct uh, um, you know, reaction for iron. There are several ones, okay, I'm going to show you just now but you have to uh, pick the right one, okay? So let's take a standard reduction potentials table there. Okay, let's take, uh, let's look for iron. Okay, so if you notice there, I've got iron three plus going to iron two, okay? Uh, by receiving one electron there, okay? It looks like it's the one that we're looking for. But what I wanted to just give a warning about is that there's another one for iron. Uh, look at this one, Fe2 plus going to Fe, you notice there it's, it went from, from aqueous to, uh, to solid. You remember when it doesn't have that number there, it means it's ion zero, okay? So in this case, uh, that's not the one that we're looking for. So the one that we're looking for is this one. And please, you have to make sure that you, uh, you know, it's the one that undergoes reduction. So in this case, uh, so that's 8.2. 2.2 okay that's point 0.1 there okay so it's going to be fe3 plus notice it's undergoing reduction it's receiving one electron okay now ladies and gents just to caution you please always make sure that you use only one arrow the moment you use two arrows uh, it tells you that um, you're not sure which reaction is taking place but here we know Ion 3 is changing into what? I, ion 2 plus, right? And in this case, that would be the half reaction that takes place. Please remember with only one arrow, otherwise you will lose marks. Right, uh, the next one, uh, 8.2.3, they say uh, the net overall reaction for this uh, um, cell, uh, for the cell reaction that takes place in this cell. Now, what would have happened here is that you would have had iron 3 plus, okay? Right, um, what I normally prefer to do is that, obviously, you know, I just write down the, uh, both the half reactions. So let me just show you quickly. So you would have had this reaction that takes place at electrode Y, uh, but at electrode X, you would have taken zinc, right? Which is now converted to zinc 2 plus, by giving away two electrons. Now to write down the net cell reaction, uh, this is not the answer to what they are looking for. So I'm gonna take these two reactions and I'm going to actually do something there, okay? Um, you know what, maybe let me just write down, uh, let me just repeat this one just to show this is the answer to the previous question, okay? Uh, so this is not the overall. Uh, so that's Zn2 plus and then I'm rewriting this one again. So this is Fe3 plus, plus an electron, uh, that would give me Fe, right? Uh, now, I'm, I'm trying to write down the net or the overall reaction over there. So what you need to do is just to make sure that the number of electrons that are given are equal to the number of electrons received, right? So what I'm going to do to make sure that those electrons are equal means I have to multiply this equation uh, by two, right? Okay, so that two times one, that's two, that's going to be two, that's going to be two over there, right? So look at this, number of electrons uh, given equal to number of electrons received, so that cancels out. So in this case, we've got zinc, K 
okay i'm writing everything that's on the left hand side so i've got zinc plus 2fe3 plus which will give you zinc 2 plus okay that's on the left uh, right hand side plus 2fe oh goodness uh, can you see i wrote uh, i wrote fe minus there instead of uh, fe2 plus okay so that's 2fe2 plus so that is our net cell reaction okay so we've got our net cell reaction and it's perfectly balanced okay so that's our final answer um if you find that you know you're not able to follow on this lesson uh, please just go and make sure that you uh, obviously look at the videos that we've just produced uh, we have um, a full video on how to operate the galvanic cell right uh, and it will help you quite a lot all right let's move on to 8.3 so they wanted us to calculate the initial emf of the cell and remember we say it's the initial emf because remember as the cell operates right um what happens is that uh, because it's a closed system ultimately it reaches a state of dynamic equilibrium uh um it, the, the, the 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 this reaction actually becomes reversible and um obviously you reach a state of dynamic equilibrium where the rate of the forward is equal to the rate of the reverse and at that point ultimately this cell will have a potential of uh, zero the emf will eventually become zero so what happens is that it will start out uh, high and it will keep decreasing until it gets to zero and at that point you know that it has reached a state of equilibrium right so um how do we calculate the emf okay our equation is e cell and by the way you have given that equation um it's equals to e cathode okay minus e anode so all we need to go do is go to our standard potential we know the cathode in this case is going to be the iron uh, three plus iron two plus cell okay uh if i pull my um standard cell notate uh, re, um, a table uh, that's 0 0.77 so that's our cathode so the potential there is 0 0.77 uh, minus our anode remember this was the zinc zinc 2 plus okay and if you go there again all right there's the zinc 2 plus so that's minus a negative 0 0.76 negative 0 0.76 okay and our final answer um that will be okay uh, so that would be 1.53 uh, okay so that's the emf of the cell all right uh, i think that's quite standard okay so the final question okay they say to us how will the initial emf of the cell be affected when the concentration of the iron three ions um, is changed to 0 0.6 moles per cubic decimeters uh, choose uh, from increase decrease or remain the same all right um, so essentially remember that the initial concentration we always say the initial concentration must be one mole per cubic decimeter for each of the um, you know uh, uh, the 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 concentrations uh, on your electrolytes right so uh, in this case they are asking us if that initial concentration is now changed to 0 0.6 which means that they actually decrease the concentration right will the ultimate emf or well the initial emf will it increase decrease or remain the same the answer is quite simple uh, in a sense that look at this remember what causes the the emf to become 1.53 i want you to just think about this i'm gonna put this away so this is an exothermic reaction if you want to uh, look at it uh, like that so it means as the forward reaction takes place right um what happens is that if zinc reacts if you want to look at it as that reacts with iron three plus ions 
we get those products, but we also get energy in the form of electrical energy uh, to the tune of 1.53 volts, right? So now, uh, obviously, this is dependent on the amount of reactants you have, right? Of which Fe3 plus ions are one, right? Is one of those reactants. So if, if I reduce the amount of Fe3 plus ions, then it means that the forward reaction cannot take place at the same rate. And as a result, it means that uh, the, the EMF will actually decrease. Okay. So that is how we will look at that final answer. So that was 8.4. Our answer is it will decrease. Okay. Right. Um, in a sense, you know, when you want to interpret this, you can actually interpret it uh, using Le Chatelier's principle because I remember it is a closed system after all. Uh, so the, every principle that applies to chemical equilibrium does apply uh, to the cell. Okay, and that's our 14 marks. I'm sure you got that. Okay, fair and square. And there it is. And we are done. All right. So, um, yeah, uh, please just uh, continue to uh, work hard. All right. And, uh, you know, I'll be telling you or I'll, I'll be uh, making a video on study methods, um, obviously, after we are done with the prelims and, and so on. And wherein I'll advise you, you know, uh, particularly for those of you who may not have done well for the prelims uh, on what to do. But otherwise, just keep following the channel and please keep working hard, ladies and gents. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.